So I've recently added a new tool to my photography gear arsenal. A tool that made me more productive, that made my life easier, that made me be able to work from literally anywhere and I think I should share it with you. The goods, the bad. Yes, it made my life much easier but it has a few things to be improved and I'll be sharing those with you as well. Let's go! What is up and welcome back to the channel. I was a little bit away from YouTube for the reason that I was living my childhood dream. I was uh, going to Hogwarts, uh, trying to become a wizard. And I confess that I fell a little bit too deep into the whole of Hogwarts legacy, but the game is finished and I'm back. I'm not here to talk about video games. I am here to talk about the tool that made me more efficient possibly better and way faster when I'm editing photos. I'm here to talk about an iPad Pro. As you may know, I am a Windows slash Android kind of guy, but in my job I edit photos on an iPad and the flow is so good. Also, I saw in first hand my friend editing photos in Scotland on an iPad and when I was backing up my photos, he already had his photos ready to be posted on Instagram. Ridiculous, that's just just ridiculous. So I decide I should get one. I got an iPad 5th generation, which is the first one with the M1 chip on a 12.9 inch, just because the large screen makes it easier for me to edit the photos. I got it second hand, because that's what fits the budget. And I got an Apple Pencil, because that's an invaluable tool. It gives me extra precision and it cuts the time even more. So before I get into the goods and bads, just to give you a little bit of context, I kind of need to briefly uh, talk about the workflow uh, that I'm doing with the iPad. I don't import the photos through the iPad. I import them through the Lightroom Classic, which is the laptop version. And I'm gonna come back to the why later on in this video. So now that you have that information, let's jump into the goods and bads. So start with the goods. Number one, the operational system doesn't really matter. As I said, I import the files on the Windows and I can open them on the iOS and on Android as well because everything happens through Adobe Cloud. So that story of iOS and Android systems not talking to each other, that doesn't happen here because the synchronization is through Adobe Cloud. So that's just one less thing to worry about. Number two is that you don't need a lot of storage either on the iPad or in the Adobe Cloud. The cost of extra storage, both on the physical iPad and on the Adobe Cloud is quite expensive. But a feature that solves this is that you can actually import only the smart previews to your iPad instead of the raw files. I synchronized 860 photos from Lightroom Classic to Lightroom Mobile and he only used about 300 megabytes, which is basically 1.5% out of my 20 gigabytes. In the future, when I don't need these files to be in the cloud anymore, I can just unsync them and they'll be just on my Lightroom Classic, freeing up space in the cloud. Number three is that on my experience, it's much easier to edit photos on the iPad than it is to edit photos on the laptop. I don't know if you're like me, but I hate editing photos with a mouse. I hate moving the sliders with the mouse and then you go too much or you just don't go enough and you can never stop in the number that you want until you actually have to go and type the number. Years ago, I bought a drawing tablet which I pair with a, its pen and that substitute the mouse. I don't have to look at a mouse again when I'm editing photos, this becomes the mouse. Now this, the combination of the iPad with the Apple Pencil, he actually brought it to another level. Editing the photos right on the screen is just, I can't even explain. Especially when you're trying to clean up something you don't want in a scene or when you are cleaning the, the skin of someone trying to get off the, uh, what you call them, the spots, trying to get rid of spots like that. Also the M1 chip is very responsive. So there's almost no time from the moment that you actually make a change until it processes. You don't have to wait until you give the next command. It's, it's done, it's there, you're ready, ready for you to go. Number four, portability. All that you need is just an internet connection. The iPad that I bought is the one that doesn't have uh, space for a SIM card, again, for budget reasons. Uh, but I can always uh, route the internet from my phone to the iPad, or most likely, what kind of places I have Wi-Fi today? You can use to edit photos from literally anywhere, from your desk, where you're supposed to be editing, from your couch while you're watching the sunset from when you're getting a tattoo done which I actually recommend because it made all the pain go away focus on the edit didn't even feel the pain from your toilet literally from anywhere it's much easier and much lighter than carrying a laptop 
a mouse uh, drawing tablet unless you can actually edit from the touchpad is that called touchpad? yeah unless you can edit from there but you're still gonna have to carry a heavy laptop number five the edits are updated throughout the device pretty much instantaneously. When you make an edit in one of the devices, it's gonna automatically update in all the devices. Uh, how fast, you ask me? It only depends on how fast your internet is. I have the same photo open in both devices, and I'm just gonna do a very drastic edit, and I'm literally just gonna boost all, all the way up the exposure, just so we can actually see it happening. And I'll move away to another photo. And let's see how long it takes here to update this guy. So that was pretty much 20 seconds to update from the iPad to the phone throughout the Adobe Cloud. And it works the same way with the Adobe Classic on the laptop. I just noticed that it kind of takes just a little bit longer to do from the, from the iPad to the Lightroom Classic on the laptop. I don't know why. It could be because they're two different Lightroom versions but it just takes a little bit longer than to do from the iPad to the phone. Let's go with six. Battery life. The battery life actually surprised me uh, quite positively. I thought the battery wasn't going to last that long, but you can actually edit a lot of photos on one charge. And that's actually another good point on, on portability. Uh, the charger for the iPad is literally just a wall plug and a, and a cable, when the charger for the laptop is all the uh, the font and this like it's a longer cable it, it, it takes more space and if you're in a place that you don't have a plug you can literally just use a phone uh, power bank and that will power, power up your iPad that doesn't really work for a laptop you need a much bigger power bank so that's another very good point you have pretty much unlimited battery as long as you have power banks number seven and final good point that I'm talking about today is that you can actually use the iPad as a large screen for your camera you can connect your iPad to the camera via Bluetooth or via Wi-Fi. I haven't done yet, actually. But I had connected on my company's uh, camera and iPad. And you can use that as a larger screen for when you're shooting and you can actually see the photos in a much bigger size than you can just see on the back of the screen. If you're in a client and they want to see results straight away, you can, you can show them through a bigger screen than just in the back of the camera. Always just make sure you're telling your client that those are raw photos and that there's still a whole editing process that comes after that. And this may actually make your client value your editing process even more because he will have seen the raw photos and he will, he will see what you're delivering. So he will value this process that's in between the photo and the, the delivery. You can also control the camera itself from the camera app on the iPad, same as you can do on the phone. Uh, you can control shutter speed, aperture, ISO, everything through the camera app on the iPad. The only uh, downside, there's actually two downsides, the only downside is that it eats a lot of battery from the camera, like a lot. And the other downside is that you cannot uh, connect uh, through a cable the iPad and the camera because the iPad doesn't recognize. I know that the Canon app doesn't recognize if you kind of better the camera through the iPad, so it has to go through wireless, which consumes a lot of battery. And since we're talking about low point, uh, let's start about things that I think that can be improved. And because I know you want to hear that. Number one, and this was actually almost a deal breaker, is that if you want to add photos to Lightroom directly through the iPad, you need to have the photos saved on the iPad, which means you're gonna need a lot of storage on your iPad, just because you need to have the raw file in here. So that's the reason why I am still importing through Lightroom Classic, because I can have the photos stored on my drives, on my physical drives, and I have the raw saved there, and I will import to Lightroom only smart reviews, and the smart reviews I'm going to synchronize with the iPad and the phone through the cloud. The thing is, if you have an adapter, you can plug in your SD card and your SSD drive, and you can transfer files from the SD card to the SSD drive through the iPad. But when you go to import, you can't do that through the SSD. The photos have to be saved on the iPad. Or maybe I just don't know how to do it. Maybe I'm being stupid here. And if I'm being stupid here, please correct me because that was almost a deal breaker for me and I haven't found a solution yet apart from importing from Lightroom Classic 
and then synchronizing to the cloud but uh, I still have to go through the laptop. Number two, uh, posture. That may not be such a big one, especially when you compare to the first one. But we do spend hours editing, and I notice that when I'm editing on the screen, since I'm not looking forward, I'm actually looking down, and I feel like I'm bending my, my back all the time. And that can be bad, like after a couple of hours editing, you kind of start feeling on your back. Number three, and final. It took me a while to understand and organize the synchronization process. I thought I would import the files on, lap on the laptop, and magic there on the iPad. That was a little bit more stressful than that and for a moment I thought it wouldn't work and so there would, there would be no point of having the iPad but in the end it worked out just fine and I'm actually thinking about making another video about this workflow or process or whatever you want to call so if that's something that interests you down in the comments please. That is my first impression of working with an iPad to edit photos and I have to say that my first impressions are very positive. Any tool that makes your job either easier or faster or better should be added to the arsenal. The iPad literally makes the three of them. Also, the iPad set me free of having to carry a two kilo gaming laptop everywhere. Either if it's for a photography trip or if it's just for tourism or whatever it is, I can bring the iPad and I don't need to carry a laptop with me anymore. I can literally do everything that I do on the laptop on the iPad and the screen is only three inches smaller. If I only want to edit a quick photo from my trip to post on Instagram, of course I'm going to save it to the iPad and then import it directly to Lightroom. I'm not going to do that for a whole job when I come back home with 1200 pictures. But if it's just a one photo, 100%. So that's it for me. If you like this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up. It is really good to be back and I will try not to disappear again unless they release a Lord of the Rings game. Then I'm gone, bye. I wasn't actually just playing Hogwarts Legacy, I was working on something really cool with my fiance, which that will be news very, very soon, so keep tuned in about it. Anyway, make sure to give me a thumbs up, and comment down here if you already use an iPad, or if you're planning to use one after seeing this video. If you found any value in this video, maybe consider subscribing to the channel, and ring the notifications bell as well. And if you do share this video with a friend, you're the most amazing person in the world. So yeah, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.